הגלובלי. גם הקמנו את הבדירים של גיל שריעה. הכול לא יתגעו זיתנו. NASA goes fishing in Nakuru as principals warn of a possible boycott of Paul. <laughs> DP William Ruto woos Bungoma as he dismisses the opposition alliance as visionless. Uyo mjamali ni uliza, umejua mwenye hii namba? Mika mwambia ya uyo ni dadangu mkubwa. Atikuja gilgil, walipata ajali. Naomba sirikali tafadali, angalia hii namba ya barabara. Barabara inatuhua, inatumaliza. Tears as a family mourns the loss of three of its members in yesterday's accident. Nimeza wa kwanza hakanivumilia, wa bili hakanivumilia. Watatu, amenivumilia. Sasa waine ikawa shida. Mama ayu kwa kazi, na waliachana na baba. Sasa, mamangu kwa piki yake na haoni. Tonight, we tell you the agony of a family in Wasingishu whose five members are all blind. Mother's Day to all of you out there. I hope you had a great day and a great weekend and are ready to start the week in a most informed way. This is Checkpoint and I'm Yvonne Okwara Matole. Our sign language interpreter is William Silla. Now for the better part of last week, IEBC was responding to queries on Twitter over the reshuffle um, and it sort of raised allegations of rigging. There was also the talk of um, the official campaign period. Is IBC able to crack the whip on aspirants and ensure a free, fair and credible poll in just about 85 days' time? We're discussing this with a group I now call my super panel. They're sharp, they're smart, they're candid, and they're fair and balanced. You don't want to miss our conversation today. We'll be telling you more about who they are and why they're so important. Also, tonight we will be fact-checking some details. Was development money that was, well, was money that was borrowed used only for development? Or was it also used for recurrent expenditure? Plus, I will be talking about some post I allegedly made on Facebook. We'll be debunking that on Fact Check tonight. Welcome to the program. The hashtag to use on social media is Checkpoint. Let's get started with the day's top stories. Now, the National Super Alliance maintains it will boycott the August 8th general election if the Court of Appeal rejects their appeal for presidential results to be announced at the constituency level. The alliance comprising of five principals says that they will only accept results announced by returning officers at constituency levels and not by the IEBC chair Wafula Chebukati. The leaders announced this during a rally held at Afraha Stadium in Nakuru town. Chris Thiru reports. <laughs> It was the first major political rally by the opposition National Super Alliance, NASA, since they unveiled their presidential candidate, ODM party leader, Raila Odinga, with Wiper party leader, Kalonzo Musyoka, being his running mate. NASA, 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 NASA. And the venue was at Afraha Stadium in Nakuru County, a county perceived to be Jubilee stronghold. How are you, man? Tangle <laughs> For the first time, 
Bei ya maziwa inashinda bei ya petroli. They promised to deal with the high cost of living within 90 days of taking over power. Tunataka tuimarishe uchumi. Tunataka vijana wetu wapate ajira. Sisi kwa NASA tunataka tulinde wakulima wetu. Sana wametutanganya ati on Wednesday wanaenda Mexico kulete ugali. Baada ya siku moja wanasema imefika. The politicians warned the Jubilee against attempting to steal the elections and asked their supporters to be vigil during and after the poll. Kura ikizabika kule mashinani, uamuzi huo ni uamwisho. Sisi kama wananasa hatuta kubali kuenda boma astena. Ili apie wa mepeleka kwa mahakama ambayo judge mku anatarajua weka pamoja na Pius Bourne. Tunaoliza kama wananasa waondoe maramoja. The politicians also faulted Jubilee on a myriad of problems facing the country, including graft and nepotism. The opposition politicians have cautioned the electoral body, IEBC, against being partisan in the run-up to the poll, adding that the elections must be free and fair. This being the first political rally since the opposition unveiled their presidential candidate, they promised to be holding at least one major rally in at least one of the 47 counties even before the official campaigns kick off. Chris Dairo, KTN News, Etafra Stadium, Inakuru County. Deputy President William Ruto has defended the speed with which the government imported maize from Mexico. Ruto says the government had to move with speed to address the current maize shortage following accusations that the shortage was artificially created. Ruto, who addressed several gatherings in Bungoma County, says the importation will not affect local farmers. <laughs> After previously facing a hostile reception in Bungoma, Deputy President William Ruto was back to the county, and this time things were different as he addressed a rally in Kimilili. <laughs> The Jubilee government is facing criticism over the current high cost of living. The government has imported maize from Mexico to try and ease the situation, a move that has put the Uhuru Kenyatta administration on the spot with claims that the speed with which the maize was delivered may suggest an artificial creation of a maize shortage. He says the government will ensure that the importation of maize will not affect local farmers. We are going to be careful as the government of Kenya so that we import only enough for the shortage of our, our products. Only enough for maize and only enough for sugar and we will make sure that it doesn't destabilize the 6 million farmers who are engaged in maize and sugar cane growing. Ruto had earlier addressed gatherings in Shinoko, Misiku, and Kamukuyua as Jubilee tries to make inroads into Western Kenya. Rita Tinina, KTN News. Right now, the decision by Machako Senator Johnston Madama to quit the Wiper Party has been widely termed as a major blow to NASA presidential running mate Kalonzo Musioka. 
But just how influential is Mudama beyond Machakos? Tonight on Spotlight 2017, Murimi Mwangi examines the possible impact of the Kalonzo Mudama standoff on NASA campaigns in Ukambani. Faced with the enormous task of fitting in the shoes of Machakos Senator Johnston Mudama is this man, Jackson Musiokakala. We are ready for the rest. I'm not going to promise a bruising battle, but what I'm going to promise the people of Machakos is uh, servant leadership. Kala landed the senatorial ticket after Mudama declined to pick the certificate protesting the declaration of Wavinyandeti as the Machakos gubernatorial candidate for WIPA. The senator accusing Kalonzo of imposing Wavinya on the electorate. This barely a month after Kitui Senator David Musila quit WIPA protesting his defeat by Governor Julius Malombe in the race for the gubernatorial ticket. Sasa na letu, na watu kama mudhama wanatengeme wa heti abebe kikaratazi kinaandi kwa waipa, arafu mudhama seme, candidate in the sasa, hakuna lingene, nisasaidia chama. Apana. Mudhama is quite a, a forceful person, and when he's on your side, it counts. But uh, the more he sends mixed signals in Ukambani, is going to be kind of irrelevant, and I would not like mudhama to be irrelevant in Ukambani politics. Wherever Senator Mudama is, he should know we still love him as a party. Musila has already tactically withdrawn from Kalonzo's kitchen cabinet. <laughs> While Mudama is said to be unwilling to work with the Ukambani NASA campaign team. That includes, among others, Makweni governor Kivuda Kibwana. Like in Wavinya's case, Mudama claims that Kibwana was a newcomer to WIPA, imposed on the electorate by Kalonzo. All of us must be disciplined and all of us must respect uh, the party uh, leadership. And it is not good to blackmail people, to bully people and all that. This is why I chose again the name Stephen. Kwa nduguzetu wa Islamu, hamujui maana ya Stephen. Stephen alipigwa na mawe. Forgive them. Lakini nasema hapa kuna matatizo ndugu zangu ni na mbio la mgambo likilia kuna jambo. To unseat President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto, NASA will have to deny Jubilee round one win by blocking the duo from attaining the mandatory 50 plus 1 percent of all the votes. But with Jubilee also spoiling for some more votes in presumed opposition strongholds, some analysts caution that WIPA could shoot itself in the foot over the ongoing supremacy battles. The journey for Stephen Kalonzo Musioka to become president does not begin in 2022, it begins now. We need everybody on board. Some observers argue that Kalonzo's change of brand of politics could have been occasioned by the recent defections of key WIPA legislators to Jubilee, including Kalonzo's area MP John Munuve. The defections coming months after bitter exchanges between Kalonzo and WIPA elected Machakos governor Alfred Mutua, who recently endorsed President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election. My mistake is I've been too trusting. I've assumed other people have easy way of working, particularly because my training is my word is my bond. An attempt by a group of Ukambani opinion leaders accompanied by Nairobi Deputy Governor Jonathan Mweke to reconcile Muthama and Kalonzo flopped. Muremi Mwangikeche News, Nairobi. All right, now away from politics, three sisters were among the people killed in Saturday's crash when a bus collided head-on with a trailer along the Nairobi-Naivasha Highway. The three were among the 20 people who died in the early morning crash. And as Raquel Mwigai reports, relatives and friends thronged the Gilgil Hospital mortuary to identify the bodies of their loved ones. The harsh reality for friends and relatives of the victims of the early Saturday morning accident. 
A tragedy brought closer home as relatives went to Gilgil Mochery to identify the bodies of their loved ones. One of the families lost three sisters who were traveling to Kisumu for a friend's burial. The sisters, Beatrice, aged 38, Elizabeth Ongoro, 28, and Helena Kinyi, 38, breathed their last at this point, the horrific scene of the tragic accident that claimed other 20 lives. <laughs> Sarah Acheng was also among those who visited Gilgil Mochari. Fighting tears, she recalls the last communication she had with her sister Gladys Otieno, a mother of one, just before the Grizzly Road accident that cut short her sister's life. Kwanza vila lienda kwa gari, akaniambia nasikia mechoka. Nika muambia suwende tu kwa nyumba, akaniambia asha kata gari sasa anaenda. Nika muambia ata ungeacha tu yo pesa, urudi kwa nyumba. Jikuna matanga nyalitoka ukambani. There were calls she made hoping that her sister will tell her of how far they had gone into the journey, but a call that was received by an unexpected and unfamiliar voice. Kufika saa mbili, napata simi yake inalia. Uyo jamali ni uliza, umejua mwenye hii namba? Nika mwambia, uyo ni dadangu mkubwa. Atikuja gilgil, walipata ajali. She made the trip to St. Mary's Hospital and then to Gilgil Hospital, hopeful that her sister, the breadwinner in her family, was still alive. It was the shocking information of death that also reached the relatives of Rafael Otuoma, who was on his way to Busia to attend his father's burial. For this family, it was double tragedy. Sisi wote atokuzika baba na ndugu yangu tena amewacha familia. Sasa hii familia nashindwa juu yako na watoto watatu wenye imebidi jukumu ya baba alikuwa anafanya tumepoteza. The 2 a.m. accident in Soisambu area along the Nairobi Nakuru Highway claimed 20 lives. The figure increases the number of dead on this road to 90 between January and 11th May this year. So far, construction along the accident scene on the busy highway has commenced with the Kenyan National Highway Authority elevating highway guardrails. Raquel Mwigai, KTN News. Needless loss of lives on our roads. We indeed uh, condole with those that lost their loved ones. Now, imagine you're blind and four of your children are also blind. To make matters worse, you've been kicked out of your home by your own husband and you're now trying hard to make ends meet. That is the story of Brenda Cabendera, who now lives a life of abject poverty. Elvis Koske tells us her story. A visit to her home here in Cheplaskei, Wasingishu County, reveals a miserable life Brenda Cabendera lives in together with her four visually impaired daughters. This bedsitter house being their only earthly possession. A radiant smile hides the tribulations she has undergone since 2007 when she delivered her fourth-born child, who, like the other children, had inherited the same defect. Watoto sababu ni meza wa kwanza akanivumilia, wa bili akanivumilia, watatu. Amenivumilia. Sasa waine ikawa shida, ikawa chungu sasa. Mm -hmm. e, Akashindwa ni nini inaendelea huku. Mm -hmm. e, lakini kwetu ni mezaleo kwa watoto saba. Hakuna mmoja ata mmoja kona kasoro. Mm -hmm. Na sisi wazazi wetu waliaga tuki watoto. Sasa mwenyange jibu yoshuswali labda ni mamangu wa mababangu. She tearfully narrates how her former husband turned into a monster just because of what had befallen a family. Following the ethnic clashes between the neighboring communities, Kabendera was forced to seek refuge in this part of the county. Ikawa shida sana kwa ndoa. Na wakati tulikimbia crashes ya 207, hapo ndio tupo tuliachania na mzee na tu kwa irudiana tena. National Council for the Persons with Disabilities kama waneza fanyiwa registration, wakapate pia kitu kidogo. Uwa nasikia kwa mba walamavu wanapata kitu kila mwezi. Lakini kwa familia hii, awajaweza kupata chochote. Kila wakati anatupikia mtu ombe, mtu saidie, na school fees, mtoto anataka kurudi kwa shule, next week anafukuzwa. 
mara ingine tunaandikia principal text message kwa still keep the student we are struggling to kiongoja what we we'll respond from whatsapp wa respond tuna respond the little sai ni apply university di kufanya diploma na baada kwa apply sijasaidika nile apply na sikupata shule siku hakuna vile mama yaza nisaidia sana kwa sababu mama ayuko kazi na waliachana na baba sasa mamangu kwa peke yake na haoni tunavaa kuishi kwa pamoja na hasa sana <coughs> wale mabu wametengwa vibaya tumezunguka tumezunguka na labda kama si vita tungekuwa pamoja and this was what destroyed a marriage elvis kosgei kt news inasingishu county a strong mother doing the best for her children even with her disability want to be celebrated on this mother's day Kembu Governor William Kaboga now says he will vie for the governorship position come August the 8th as an independent candidate. Addressing the media today, the governor said the Jubilee primaries in the area were marred with a lot of irregularities that saw him defeated by legislator Ferdinand Waititu. He said he was only bowing to pressure from his supporters who want him to vie. After much deliberations, having consulted my wife and the rest of my family, I stand here today to announce my independent candidature for the second term as your governor. Due to public demand, I have decided to honor the wishes of the people of Kiambu, Nitakwa kwa ballot. I will be now, hundreds of stars in the fashion industry in Kenya turned up to showcase their talent at the Spring Into Style dinner event held at the Lord Errol Hotel in Nairobi last evening. Through runways, they featured designers such as Deepa Dosaja and Sally Carago, performances by young music artists hailing from Kibera slums, accessory designs, and the models all braving the cold evening to feature in the unique event. 5% of the ticket sales that were going for 7,500 for dinner and 105, 1,500 for the show only will go to the Human Needs Project in Kibera, whose objective is to provide basic needs to Kibera residents. Standard Group was part of the sponsors of the event. <laughs> Poeta by M. Bicar. Koki Designs. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up. I asked my mum for pocket money one day and she said, I'm not going to give it to you. You have to do something to earn it. And I'm an artist, so I thought, okay, I can make something. And I saw this image on the internet of a really blinged up jacket a denim jacket and it was completely decorated and over the top. There's people trying to buy tickets at the door and I had to like kind of try to get them to come in. <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, it's also an evening to be enjoyed. So uh, it's something that we want to do yearly and uh, hopefully people will learn to buy their tickets in advance. <laughs> Watch out for next year, we will do it. It's going to be always after Easter. So the Easter fell a little late this year. Next year we might choose an earlier date when it falls earlier. I think it's great that there's also a celebration of, of Kenya's gemstones and jewelry culture. Uh, in, in, uh, and, uh, and that's great because, um, you know, uh, Kenya has a lot of hidden treasures. Uh, the best kept secrets uh, are to be found in our gemstones, whether they've been found in, uh, in, uh, in Baringo, uh, the rubies of Baringo, the sapphires of Samburu, uh, the tsavorite of Boi. Uh, and and, and uh, I'm seeing pieces and pieces of that. And, and for me, that, that's really good. 
All right, so it's time to check our facts and take a look at what's true, what's not, what's correct, what's incorrect. Alphonse Shundu, who's the Kenya editor of Africa Check, joins me uh, for this that we do every week. Um, and it's interesting today, I almost can't hold myself, but we will do our business first and then we'll talk about everything else that comes after. Um, yeah, so it's good to have you with us as always. So today, um, a couple of you asked so, us um, to take a look at this one. Remember, there's been a whole debate in the country about whether the money um, that has been borrowed in the country was spent only and solely on development. And Shundu will be telling us why this even matters, right? Okay, so let's then take a look at the statement that we are checking for this week. And that was made by President Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh, and he made this at the launch of, of the presidential. presidential portal, the delivery portal, yes? So this is what he said. As a government and as a responsible government, we are borrowing for investment in order to create growth in future um, and therefore create opportunities and jobs. So that was the president statement. So today, this is what we're checking. Has the government spent money borrowed only on development? Or has it gone into other things like recurrent expenditure? So Alphonse and his team took a look at some of the numbers. Let me just do a quick summary here, and then he'll explain exactly what these numbers mean. So this is the fiscal balance. And this is uh, what amount of money again, Shindu? Uh, 492 billion, the, it's like we call it the deficit, the shortfall. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, or At the end of the it, financial year. Yeah, the, okay. the shortfall before, uh, you see, let, let, let me break it down okay. this way. Think of it like we have a huge pot uh, of money. Mm -hmm. We know our revenues. Yep. So the first thing that we do once we get our revenues is to pay our bills. Mm -hmm. But then we need to develop. And to develop, that's why we borrow. And the law, just uh, the Public Finance Management Act, says that if we are going to borrow, put that money into development and development alone. Okay. Yes. So this is so, the law? Yes. Okay. This is the law. All right. So that is the match that uh, was needed. Uh -huh. So that's the match that at the end of the financial year, when they looked into that part of the money that they, they did not have, uh -huh. it is $492.1 billion. Okay. But then... So wait, this is yes. the amount that was then borrowed? This is the amount that came in. Okay. Yes, th All that right. was the shortfall. Okay. Yes. And then this is what we actually spent on, on development. On development. Okay. Yes. So that's 485.4 billion. Yes. The preliminary figures from the Treasury mm -hmm. uh, in the budget policy statement say this is the amount that was spent on uh, development. Okay. So and yet this is the amount of money that we had. That, yes, that the whole pot would have. Great. Yes. So therefore that leaves a balance of 6.7 6 billion. billion. Okay. So let's then understand this. This means that not all of this money yes, was used was for development. Used for development. There were 6.7 billion shillings yes. that did not go into development. Yes. So where could it possibly have gone? So the... The thing we got is from the World Bank, mm -hmm. and they say this could only have gone to... It, uh, the suggestion was that this money could have been spent in recurrent expenditure. And recurrent expenditure is not just salaries, yes? Oh, recurrent expenditure is not just salaries. Mm -hmm. There is travel uh, money, money for operation and maintenance in government. Okay. There is um, money for hospitality. Right. There is money for... There's all those other things. Okay, that and, are not development. Yes. Okay, but let's be clear. The reason we're saying the only place this could go is uh, recurrent expenditure, because to think otherwise would be that this money was stolen. <laughs> so we're not going with the <laughs> stolen go there. one. Okay, yes. so we're not going with the and we're saying that this yes. 6.7 okay. billion that mm -hmm. was not used on development, yes. as is required yes. by law, mm -hmm. went to recurrent expenditure. Yes. Okay, so why, why should we be worried? Why is this a big thing? This is all money that came in, and well, we can see where what when money went and where what did not go. Why should this be a big deal in this country? So, this is where the experts come in, mm -hmm. and we spoke to the executive director of IREN, Dr. Shikwati. Yes. Then we spoke to Kwame Wino of IEA. Mm -hmm. Then we spoke to uh, Razia Han yeah. of the Standard Chartered Bank. Yes. And we spoke to our professor, Morton Javan, uh -huh. from uh, Norway. Okay. Yes. And so all of these guys <laughs> said what? We are, we are trying, we're trying to understand uh -huh. uh, why should we care about mm -hmm. this. And they were telling us that if it reaches a point where you guys are borrowing and you're putting that money to recurrent, you're not creating future value for that money. 
So you will keep borrowing and putting it into recurrent, and it will get to a time when you go out to borrow, investors will give you the money at very high mm -hmm. interest rates, mm -hmm. Or uh, people will just now start shying away from uh, giving right. the country money. And because if we're paying for this money, then yes. it's supposed to give us value over the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Yes. Because that's what development is. Yes. So it would make sense to be paying back a loan for value that you will see decades to come. Yes. But if it's recurrent expenditure, it's then not. And most of all, Shundu, that this is against the law. That's against the law. Okay. And the way, the way Shikwati put it, uh -huh. it's like... You've taken a loan and you take the money and go on holiday. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you should right. know that you, you're coming back to pay it. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's how we put it. So with these figures so far, uh, that is the assessment mm -hmm. we have made. And that is the assessment that we have. Mm -hmm. And if the Treasury has different figures right. uh, to explain this, because this is from the budget policy statement. Itself, which yes. was released in November last November year. November last year, yeah. and they okay. gave it to Parliament. Right. So if they have more figures to clarify this mm -hmm. matter, then we will be happy to welcome it and engage them okay. on what to do. Yes. All right. So this is good. So at least now we have an understanding of this. And lots of people have been asking us about this, whether all the money that was borrowed in the country went to development, as should be the case. Yes. And we found a $6.7 billion that did not go to development. Yes. So therefore, that statement is... is Incorrect. Thank you. Yes. All right. So I want to talk about something else. Um, and remember, was it two or three weeks ago we told people about how to tell when, you know, an account is... It was last week. Yeah, I'm last reminded. Last week but one. No, it was yes. last week but one. Yes. So imagine my surprise, Shundu. Mm -hmm. Nairobi News and uh, Classic 105 Online quote an article that was posted on this page, supposedly by me. So in case you haven't seen it, and I've gotten so much feedback on this one about how to get a respectable husband. Surely these are not the things Yvonne Okwara ever discusses. But anyway, I talked, I gave, I was so generous with the advice. Yes. I think I told people about not to dress with Showing the cleavage and things like that. I did not know that there is this Facebook page that has existed for a year. Folks, this is not me. This picture is taken from the KTN online page. I remember this photo shoot, it was four years ago, and everything else. I mean, this was when I joined KTN in November 2012. This page, folks, is not me. Okay? Now, let me show you the real me. Apparently, by the way, that one has 48,000 followers. This is me. So this is how bad I am on Facebook. I don't have, is this what you call a cover page? Yeah. I don't have a username. Uh, oh, it's a cover photo. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> see, that's how much I don't know about Facebook. And I have, I think, about 7,000 or 8,000 followers. So if we can just go back to that other page. Thank you, Nairobi News. Thank you, Classic 105. And for everyone that thought that was a great article, it was not. Everything that you see on this page is not me. Let me give you a little tip. I am very bad like that. So I use the same photo across all media, which is that true love cover photo that I did a couple of years ago. Unbelievable. By the way, this one at some point says journalist Nakuru. I'm based here in Nairobi. <laughs> I'm shocked. It has 48,000 followers. <laughs> and this person posts every day. Every day they have all those things they say. So I'm shocked. <laughs> so we, 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 if... Uh what we are seeing here is, is, a, is, a, is a case of identity theft. Yes, it is. Yes, so we, oh, when, okay. when you look at it, this is, it's all, it's, it's Yvonne. Yeah. Everything, in fact, I yeah. was looking at the bio. <laughs> it's picked from the, your KTN bio, I think. Yes, they picked it from, no, they even and picked it from my fellowship bio. Oh my gosh. Yes. yes. And yeah. So it's easy yes. to see how this could be me, folks. It, it is not. And for now, the posts, um, even though I, I feel like a politician today, I categorically distance myself <laughs> from any posts that are made on this page. They may not have irked me, but who knows? So if you see any crazy post on that page, not me. So this is me. Boring. Hardly post anything. Very unpopular. That's just me. On that note, <laughs> we end fact check. Thank you, Shundu. Despite the fact that we taught people how to check, but I can understand. Because even I would think that was me. <laughs> Shundu Alphonse is the Kenya editor of Africa Check. He's here with us every week um, 
taking a look at statements that are made. Oh, and by the way, that report on uh, the country's debt yes. is on africacheck.org. If you want to read it, you know, they have got acres of space to explain this. Uh, he'll be here with us again to Next tomorrow. Week. Next week. Yes. We're working on a few others. So if you know of any, the hashtag is factcheck at africacheck at shundu at Yvonne Okwara. And we'll definitely be checking that for you next week. So uh, we'll see you then. We're taking a break. My super panel is up next. We're talking about IEBC and whether it conducts itself in a way that, you know, tells you that they're going to run a credible election on the 8th of August. I will see you in a short while. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. The shock and surprise on this one.